G'day everybody, welcome to part 8 of the Speed Passion LM1 build series. Part 8, what we will be doing is finishing off the steering and the suspension, or front suspension. And part 8 is going to include probably what is the most hated part of building any radio control car. And that is the turnbuckles and to uh, get you give you an idea uh, turnbuckles are uh, what uh, what are also your camber links and your steering rods and the, to show you because what I've done is I've gone ahead and done one side and then I'll go over the next the, I've done the right hand side I'll do the left hand side for you on camera so what the turnbuckles are are these so you have the two plastic ends with the rod in the middle which connects your steering knuckle to the steering rack so like I said this the turnbuckles are probably the most hated part of building any RC car well I know for me it is anyway you're there you're trying to turn it and you sneeze and then pew, and you drop it and same goes for the kingpin too because I'll explain to that in a sec okay so um, what I've also done is I've done both the turnbuckle for the right steering knuckle and I've done the turnbuckle for the uh, servo connector to the steering rack um, so what I'll do is I'll go with you now with the left turnbuckle and then what we'll do is we'll finish off with the steering knuckle okay so now when you're doing this one thing I would recommend uh, if you're going to be doing building a fair few kits like you know I've got I'll be honest I've got 20 odd cars in my collection um, and one of the things that come in handy for me are these is what this is it is a digital caliper you know what it does is um, you have a screen here I mean at the moment it's at zero because it thinks it's closed but you can turn that on and it will give and you loosen the top bit here and you got a little wheel and you move it and this will move back and forth and you got outer inner and you got length here now these are very good when when it comes to doing turnbuckles so what I've done is uh, for the steering turnbuckles I have it set uh, what it recommends at 25 millimeters so for the inner this is 25 millimeters from point to point so that will help me get an accurate and an even turnbuckle for however many I have to do at that length so also scalpel or hobby knife whatever you want to call it um, when when it comes to doing the turnbuckles uh, what I'll do here is you don't have to do a lot but you get on the outer edge and you just uh, cone it out a little bit and that just helps with um, starting a thread on on the plastic it doesn't have to be neat it just has to be opened a little bit okay now here comes the fun part now with the rod uh, you probably can't see hang on let's get it in focus okay you can see how in this part here you can see like a little notch that notch gives you an orientation so pay close attention so with this uh, the notch has to be facing inward so in this case because we're doing the left it has to be facing that way so also that means you have to pay attention to these parts here because they're two different kinds one's for going on the steering rack and one's going on the steering knuckle okay so let's get into it so we want the notch away from the one that goes to the steering rack and pay close attention too you might be going why the hell is this thing not turning on like screwing in because the thread on these it has uh, clockwise thread and counterclockwise thread so pay attention because you might be there thinking what you know why isn't it working okay um, what also helps too 
So you just get, get one of my drivers here and use this little tool comes in handy, it's included in the kit. And you just put it around here and damn. And just turn it. You might find it jumps off every now and then. Okay, so that's that one done. So now we'll get this one. You know what? I'll need to change. Just so I can put it through. Okay. So the same procedure. Except in this case, it's going clockwise. So, because the general rule is righty tidy, lefty loosey. Well, when it's counterclockwise, it's the exact opposite. So, there's lefty tidy, righty loosey. Damn. Probably the only problem with using these tools. Okay, so pay close attention to. Alright, so now what we'll do is we'll just check with the digital calipers. Okay, so I've wound it in a little bit too far, so I have to loosen it a little. There we go. No, probably another turn. You can see what I mean how this is probably the most hated part of any RC build. Okay, so if I put it up to the camera here, you can see that it's in the in between, so that's 25 millimeters. So now we don't need to use our calipers anymore. We'll take this off. Okay. So we'll just put that aside for the moment. Now what we'll do is we'll get onto the steering knuckle. Now what we need to do is we need to install this pillow ball into the steering knuckle. Now what I'm going to do is get a little bit of grease here and this grease will just help lube the pillow ball just so it moves around nicely. Just a little bit. You don't need. They need a lot. Just enough to just lightly grease it, like so. It doesn't have to be perfect because you got to remember it's going to be moving itself around. Now, so you don't get any on your fingers. Just put it on the end of your driver, and we'll just insert it in. Now. Here comes another fun part that is quite annoying. You will need a 3mm driver and you have this plastic part here which will screw into the steering knuckle and what that does that will prevent the pillow ball from popping out. So, And also take note of the orientation. This side here that you can see it is concave that has to face inward so it's up against the pillow ball. So, no. And also, when you go to put it on, when you take it off the parts tree, make sure that it is not doesn't have any burrs. And also, <coughs> crikey! And make sure that it doesn't cross thread when you go to put it in. This is going to be really fun. Not. Okay, so it seems to be going in without a fuss. Okay. When you feel it t go tight, just back it off and check that the pillow ball here just moves around nice which is what you want okay now when you're putting the uh, 
pile, what they call like a pilot axle because the front wheels have uh, ball bearings that will sit on the axle and that's because they're free spinning they're not they're not a drive or wheel because it's two wheel drive um, you'll notice that it's a cone shape now depending on what way you have it will determine the steering characteristics so in this case we'll be having it this way so or sorry the other way sorry because it's the left hand side for to give it a little bit of extra steering so pay attention because might need a little bit of effort to go in okay so now what we need to do is put a pillow ball screw on and a two millimeter spacer and this goes on the furthest hole on the steering knuckle okay we'll just uh, move the grease Alright, now the next final part uh, for attaching the steering knuckle is using the kingpin and the spring because these are the front uh, suspension isn't an oil filled shock, it's like a friction damper. And how it works, I'll just give you a quick look here. As we can see, there's a spring underneath, and that's that's all the movement you got. Because don't forget, this will be on, you know an on-road surface so it doesn't need a lot of movement anyway so what we need to do is we get our 0.5 millimeter spacer and then we get one of the white spacers here that are in the kit then we get the spring now I'm actually liking what Speed Passion have done here it's a with the other setups, like for instance, um, I've, I've got a Formula One car and a 112 pan car. Um, they have the same setup, except instead of what will happen here, is this will actually get screwed into uh, the, the steering knuckle. The other ones, how it works, is you have little e clips at either end. And for those who have used these on 12 scale pan cars and well GT cars, etc., will know what an absolute pain in the butt these are because they're so the tiny little eclipse and you only have to lose one and you know if you don't have any spares you're spending the next hour on the floor looking for the little eclip that you dropped. So this is a thumbs up in my book with what Speed Passion have done here. Okay so now what we do is we'll insert it into the bottom here now with the rest of the washers oop, and put the washers on got butterfingers this evening okay now what we do is we'll put the kingpin through the hole make sure you get it through the right one And then what we'll do is we screw it in tight, but just back it off a little bit. So you have to excuse me folks, you might just... Alright. So now what we do is we need a 2mm driver. If I can find it, there it is we'll connect it up to the upper suspension arm okay. now I'm just going to eyeball it at the moment later on what I will do once I've completed building the chassis I will uh, set up the front camber because I mean, because this is a live axle, you can't adjust the camber on the back. Okay, so now what we do is we'll get our turnbuckle, and with 
Whoop. Now multi grips carefully put it what we'll do is we'll just put it on no that's not gonna work. Okay, so that's clicked in. We'll just steer it over. And now, okay, so that's the steering completed, people. When you do it, make sure it moves nicely which it is and um, so yeah there you go for people that's the steering so that's all that's left for this part stay tuned for what are we doing part 9 can't remember what part we're up to <laughs> part 9 will be for the body attaching body posts and the side dampers stay tuned people